Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at the evolution of the Unitron Model 128 over the years. Let's compare these four Unitron 128 telescopes. Uh, from the left to the right, we have older to newer, and older is a probably pre-1956 or so. The one on the far right is probably 1970s, 1980s. Uh, just as an estimate. That gives you an idea. And probably, to tell you the truth, these first three are probably in the 1950s, just as a rough guess. Let me show you how this mounts. Uh, first of all, let's remove the counterweight here. The counterweight is pretty, pretty easy to do. This rod unscrews, so you got a few pieces like that. Now, to mount the, uh, the OTA, it's got these bolts. So you have this uh, saddle plate here, and then you got some bolts that go in like so. Mounts right on there. So now if you if you need to counterweight this thing, you to change the, the balance on this for declination purposes. What you're going to want to do is slide this back and forth until you get the, just the right thing. There is an issue though. So, uh, suppose you have something massive like this. This great big unihex. By the way, this appears to be original. As a matter of fact, it's so that, that this is so dated that these eyepieces don't even have Unitron marked on them. I guess we're lucky that it has Unitron marked on here. Anyway, but these are clearly Unitron eyepieces, and uh, including the big 40 millimeters, just not marked as such. So that tells you it's kind of old. The clamp style here is also pretty old. Suppose you want to put this on the back of the telescope. Watch out, because it's going to start. <laughs> I better lock it down. Lock it down every which way I can. So now I've got a great big heavy unihex on the back of this thing. This thing, if you uh, slide this as far forward as you can get, it still, it just isn't enough. Well, they made something. <clears throat> Take a look at this. I have seen only a couple of these. Uh, this is made of brass. It's pretty darn heavy, and it clamps right onto the tube. So it clamps onto the tube, and you lock it down. So now you've got something very massive at the front of the tube to counterweight this very massive thing at the back end. And now, of course, you're going to have to, you got a lot of weight up here uh, above the polar axis, so you better slide this down as far as you can go. And uh, hopefully that'll be enough. Let's see if I got it. <laughs> it might still be too, too heavy. Anyway, uh, it's at least pretty close to being balanced now. Tricky though, you have to have weights of all kinds all over the place to balance the thing. That's because of this saddle configuration. With a, a newer mount, you can slide the tube back and forth, and uh, you'll see that in the very next, the next iteration, which is probably late 50s. This is just probably early 50s. Late 50s, they fixed that with, uh, uh, with the cradle arrangement. Okay, let's compare these two. These are uh, very similar. They have similar knobs here. Much of the arrangement looks the same. They both have the sliding counterweight on an ordinary plane shaft. And a little kind of a nub down here to keep this thing in. And the counterweight is uh, actually, it's got a hollow in it so you can slide it down ways. It doesn't fall off yet though. <coughs> These are the same. Um, the slow motion controls and We'll compare that. These are a fairly coarse thread, maybe 20 TPI. I would say it's about a quarter inch, 20 or so. Um, and we'll see later on, they get to a finer thread on those. The most notable difference between these two is the style of clamping for the declination lock. Now, the declination lock here is a squeeze type lock, and this one is rather primitive. It's just a now that this bolt just grabs onto the shaft inside there. So that's one of the most notable differences. Probably the most notable differences is, 
difference is the presence of the um, of the cradle. Now the cradle is attached; it's permanently fixed to the declination shaft, but it is different than this kind of a saddle arrangement here. So now you got you, you've got a cradle. I'm just guessing this would be maybe late 50s or something like that. Uh, but in almost all other respects, these are nearly identical. Okay, these look quite similar also. These knobs are still the same. This is plastic, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure honestly if this, you know, it would be very easy for one of these to get broken or lost and have a substitution occur. Uh, so I don't know, that looks like a mismatch there between this and this knob here. So I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. Anyway, this has got the same attached cradle. This is permanently attached. Um, this one now we have evolved to something different here. Now we have a threaded shaft here and the counterweight doesn't slide on the threaded shaft. It screws under the threaded shaft. The shaft is also bigger. So uh, that's another difference. And also notice this. In the older mounts, this lock, the right ascension lock, is a kind of a crude friction device. Now we've gone to a clamping device on that, on the um, right ascension lock also. Uh, these appear to be slightly different. I'm not sure. There might be a slightly... Uh, the, the casting is clearly bigger here. So I'm not sure. I think this is the same basic style, but uh, it's bigger than that. But the main thing is, look at the size of the, size of the casting. This casting here is considerably beefier. And I'm pretty sure that the worm gear itself is actually bigger. The worm wheel may be the same size, but the worm gear itself, I do believe, is bigger on this one. Okay, you can see quite a few differences here. Uh, first thing I want to point out is this knob style is quite different. This has an insert, hexagonal insert. You can put a, a slow motion control in there or a clock drive. Matter of fact, it's very, very straightforward to put the clock drive on there. Uh, this has a removable cradle. So this comes right off. That's a pretty big improvement. And the knobs are slightly different too. This has plastic knobs here on that. This is basically the same style here. It's a thread on. Kind of, oh, what is that? Surprise, surprise. All of a sudden you got setting circles. What a deal. Um, now I believe the casting size here is the same. So it looks like this has the same casting as that. These knobs are both plastic, and I think that's correct. Uh, this also has a finer thread here. The slow motion, the declination slow motion. It's not quarter inch 20 anymore like it was on the old ones. Uh, this one and this one both have much finer threads there to give you a little bit finer control on the declination slow motion. And now here is another big difference. Look at these two things. Uh, this is your, um, you now have a right ascension slow motion that you didn't have before. And this, the idea here is so that you can put a clock drive on this thing. Theoretically, you're taking an astrophotograph or something. Uh, and then you can lock it down like so, lock it down to the right ascension shaft. The tra it's now being tracked according to the clock, theoretically. But if you need to make a slight correction, you would turn this. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the evolution of the Unitron Model 128 telescope over its lifetime. Thank you very much for watching.